Today's brief will cover the People's Liberation Army Navy service combatants of the Type 053H3 or Zhang Wei 2 class of guided missile frigates. We will cover their conception, design, build, the ships, specifications, the weapons, the sensor fits, their capabilities, their service, and finally their futures in the next 10 to 15, maybe 20 minutes, roughly, give or take. The Zhang Wei 2s can ironically be traced back to the Zhang Wei 1s, which is today's talking point. And as such, the People's Liberation Army Navy was trying to produce a bunch of ships that actually look like something from the 1980s and 1990s, then in something that looked like it came from the late 40s, early 50s, with the Type 051 Luda class. So, at this stage, four ships of the Zhang Wei 1s would be built. Now, this was the point where China was actually opening up to the rest of the world, and as such, we were producing radars, weapons to give to them, and they were buying them. And this was helping the international relations at the time. However, as we all know, they would degrade in future years. The Zhang Wei 1s would be designed in the late 70s to early 80s, and during this period, they would start to consider the Zhang Wei 2s. Now, the Zhang Wei 1s started to be built in the early 80s to early 90s, and during this period, after they were built, they proved to not be particularly useful in terms of their service to air capability. You see, on the Zhang Wei 1s, they had a large 8 cell trainable service to air missile launcher, and it didn't prove to be good at all. Now, France, luckily enough, came to the rescue with the Crotel Surface to Air Missile System, which, in typical Chinese fashion, they would reverse engineer and turn into the HQ 7 Surface to Air Missile System, which would then go on to the Zhang Wei 2 vessels that were currently in the pipeline to be built. The Zhang Wei 1s carry over the same hull to the Zhang Wei 2s, and as such, they both have some visual differences from each other, which is a great way of actually is IDing each vessel. Now the hull is 112 meters in length and as such it carries two internal decks below the main deck with one being full length and the second being broken up in occasional pieces due to machinery spaces. Now the forward end of the ship is very Type 21-esque and it wouldn't surprise me if the Chinese actually took some design cues from the Royal Navy or say for instance the French Navy. Now looking above the main deck, it's very French destroyer-esque. There is some noticeable cues, and maybe even some British design cues, because the ship is rather boxy with some occasional curves that look like it's been taken straight out of a British yard, or a French yard. Now the superstructure. So the superstructure is split into three separate sections, with a bridge, funnel, and aft hangar section. Now, the bridge section of the ship is quite large. It is multi-tiered atop of the bridge and it has a large lattice mast. Amidships, you have the ship's funnel. Now, this is flanked forward and aft by the ship's anti-ship missile launchers. The funnel does seem to have very sovereign many class destroyer-esque funnel designs, but that just might be me. Looking aft, the ship's hangar is two decks tall. It sticks one deck above the raised superstructure deck per se and this also does have some sovereign many class destroyer looks to it when you look at the sovereign many class destroyers helipad area there is the parts that actually stick out the side of the superstructure where you tend to find the close-in weapon systems are placed it's very similar on the zhang wei 2s where they've actually placed the 57 millimeter secondary guns Additionally, you'll notice that what can be appears to be a main mast on the ship is actually a large pole for the ship's knife rest early warning radar. All in all, the design is actually quite a nice looking ship and is well balanced and I personally think it's a really good looking ship, much better than the Shang Wei ones. So looking at the specifications of the ships, now the ships are 112 meters long. They have a beam of 12.4 meters and a draft of 4.3 meters. They're displaced in the regions of about 2,250 tons as standard, and this increases to 2,393 tons at full load. 
The ship's propulsion system consists of a combined diesel or diesel propulsion system. And as such, this consists of two 23,000 horsepower diesel engines and two smaller 8,750 horsepower diesel engines, which can provide the ship enough power to propel the ship's two propellers up to a top speed of 28 knots. However, usual cruise speed is about 16 knots, and as such, this gives the ship a range in the region of about 5,000 nautical miles. The ship's complement is about 170 personnel, and their standard operational period is 30 days. 10 ships of the class would actually be laid down and built. Now, because I am really bad at Chinese, or Mandarin, and I've attempted this video about 12 times before, I am not going to pronounce the ships. However, these ships are the People Liberation Army Navy ships, and somewhere over here should be a list of the ships' names. Now, the ships would be, of course, built. Now, hulls 1 through 3 and hull 9 would be built by the Hudong Shipyards in Shanghai. Hulls 4, 5, 7, and 8 would be built at the Gungzhou shipyards near Hong Kong. Hull 10 would be built by the Hangpu shipyard. And finally, we don't actually know where Hull 6 was built. However, we do know she was built somewhere. And, well, she's in service, so must have happened somewhere. So looking at the ship's initial sensor and weapons fits, please note that one vessel has been refitted since. That has a different surface wear missile system but we will cover that later on. So the initial weapons and sensor fits consist of two quad Charlie 802 Circade anti-ship missiles, one eight barrel HQ-7 surface wear missile system, the Chinese variant of uh, Kretel, one dual barreled 100 mm 56 caliber naval guns, four dual barreled 37 mm 63 caliber type 715 India dual purpose guns, two Type 65 anti-submarine warfare rocket launchers, very similar to the RBU-1000s of the Russian Navy, and finally, ten Type 945 Golf decoy launchers. So, looking at the radars, sonars, electronic warfare equipment, the cameras, the data links, and the communication systems, these are as follows. One Type 517 Nifrest Alpha Band Early Warning Radar, two Cage Navigational India Band Radars, one Type 360 Early Warning Golf Band Radar, one Type 341 Rice Lamp Fire Control India Band Radar, one Type 347 Golf Rice Bowl India Band Fire Control Radar, one Type 345 Fire Control India Band Radar, one SDJ-4 Fire Control High Frequency Sonar, one SDJ-7 Active and Passive and Medium Frequency Bound Mounted Sonar, Electronic warfare equipment consists of the Type 825 ESM receivers and the Type 981 electronic countermeasure system. TV equipment looks at the one Piranha IR tracking camera and one HQ7 TV tracker. Looking at the data link, the ships have the H8900 data link system, which is very similar to the NATO Link 11 system. The combat system is the ZKJ3 Charlie and satellite communications is provided by the SNTI240 SATCOM antennas. So we're going to look at the ship's capabilities. Now we're going to break down the ship's weapons and sensor ranges and as such we're going to start with the radars. Now the radars capabilities and detections are as follows. Nifrest has the capability to detect contact out to 110 nautical miles, but has a low range resolution and is limited to measuring just range, not height. Now, it has the capability to scan full 330 degrees. However, the rotation speed is about a rotation every six seconds, which is 10 rotations per minute. Now, the radar is limited with its detection forward because the bridge is in the way. Now, it's highly likely that this radar has sector blanking for the forward end of the ship and utilizes a secondary radar for coverage of the forward end of the vessel. 
The Type 360 radar is a large Kessegrain style radar situated atop of the ship's foremast. Now it has a stated range of about 90 nautical miles, but as it's a higher frequency radar, it actually has a better range resolution than knife rest, and as such, it is able to actually detect an airborne contact and state its height, which is good for an early warning radar. So, moving on. So the radar is fitted atop of the ship's foremast, and as such, it gives a 350 degree of coverage around the ship. The only little bit that it doesn't actually cover is the pole mast just aft of the radar, for which some other SATCOM equipment and other funky little bits are mounted atop. Rice lamp is the fire control radar associating to the ship's 37 mm secondary weapons. Now, this radar is located on the sense line of the ship, just in between the aft two 37mm guns. Now, this radar works in the India band, and as such, it's a higher frequency than most radars, so it has higher data returns, excellent for fire control and tracking of airborne or surface targets. Rice Bowl is the associating fire control radar to the ship's 100mm dual guns. Now this is located just forward of the main mast, facing the forward, and it works in suit with the 100mm gun. The 100mm gun will turn, rice bowl will turn with it. Now as it's India band, it's great for fire control, and as such it also has a range of 20 nautical miles like rice lamp. The Type 345 fire control radar is the final fire control radar on board these vessels. Now this system is associated to the HQ-7 surface to air missile system and is capable of tracking targets out to about 16 nautical miles. Now this uses two modes of operation, search or tracking and then fire control or target illumination. So the ship's sonars. Now because they are sonars they are relatively short range compared to a radar which is more longer range due to it being Radars use electromagnetic waves that travel through a less dense medium, like air, and sonars use sound waves, or, well, yeah, sound waves, to go through the denser medium of water. Now, we're going to look at the SDJ-4, which is the fire control sonar for the ship's Type 65 anti-submarine warfare rocket or mortar launchers, per se, whichever way you look at it. Now, this is a carbon copy of the RBU-1000s, that are currently in service with the Russian Navy and other such navies that Russia does like to, uh, you know, sell their stuff to. Now this sonar has a range of about two nautical miles and is a high frequency active sonar. SDJ-7 is a medium frequency bow mounted active and passive sonar. Now this means the sonar is searching for subsurface contacts. It can detect them out of 1.5 nautical miles. It is short range, just because because it's at the bow of the ship, sometimes you can get the effects of the bow waves causing a bit of sound, which thus limits the actual bow mounted sonar's range. So the electronic warfare equipment on board these ships consists of the Type 825 ESM suite. Now, this system is designed to detect radar parametrics for further analysis. Now, it is not known the full spectrum this system can actually detect, however, it's likely to be within normal parameters of Alpha to India Juliet, roughly. So now we're going to look at the side of the ship that, well, is mainly the warfare side. And this is the side that has things going whoosh, and the side that makes things go bang. Of course, I'm talking about the weapon systems. Now, the ship's main striking force is the complement of eight Charlie 802 Alpha Cicade anti-ship missiles. Nature designation is CSS N8 Cicade. Now, this weapon system is subsonic and has a speed of about 520 knots, which equates to a Mark speed of 0.78. The weapon's range is about 100 nautical miles, and the weapon uses an active seeker head, which is in the regions of about India to Juliet band. It has a seeker switch on range of about 5 nautical miles from a target 
and also has a warhead that is about 165 kilograms of Siami armor piercing high explosive. The ship's main anti-air weapon system consists of the 8-cell HQ-7 surface-to-air missile system located superfiring over the ship's forecastle. Now HQ-7 has a speed of about 1420 knots, which equates to a Mark speed of 1.86. The effective range of this weapon system is about 5 nautical miles, and an effective altitude of 16,500 feet. The weapon system utilizes the Type 345 Fire Control India Band radar, in addition to utilizing a TV tracker for target acquisition. It also uses a semi active homing seeker head. The largest caliber weapon on board is the dual barreled 100mm main gun. Now, this is classified in Chinese service as the Type 79. Now, this is a 100mm main gun. It is located on the forecastle of the ship and is controlled by the Rice Bowl Fire Control Radar. This weapon system has an effective range of about 8.1 nautical miles against an aerial target. The secondary guns on board are positioned in the four corners of the ship's superstructure. And these weapons are dual purpose, meaning they can be used against surface contacts or aerial contacts. The weapons are controlled by the Type 347 Golf Right Lamp Fire Control Radar and it fires 375 rounds per minute in an automated turret. The Type 65 Anti-Submarine Warfare Mortars, or rocket launchers, are, as I stated before, the Chinese derivative of the RBU-1000. And as a result, it fires 6 rounds per salvo. And this is a reloadable mortar launcher located on the ship's forecastle just forward of the guns. Now, this comes with a 100 kilogram warhead and can be fired out to one nautical mile away from the ship. I mean, if you're a submarine and you're one nautical mile away from a ship, you have seriously, seriously gone wrong somewhere. So looking at the last major capabilities of the ship. Now, the major capability is the use of a helicopter primarily being the Harbin Z9. Now this helicopter can be used in the anti-submarine warfare role and as such can carry two torpedoes. Now these are stored in a single hangar aft on the ship and the ship can only carry one such helo. They also utilize a large flight deck aft for the helicopter to land on. And the final capability of these ships is a pretty major one and that is the ability to replenish at sea. The ships have two RAS rigs on board. Now there's one port and one starboard just far out of the hangar. And both sides can refuel with fuel and also replenish with stores. Primarily, if there is a tanker nearby, they can conduct a replenishment underway at sea. Looking at these ships, now they would be built in the closing years of the 1990s up until about 2004, with the last ship being launched. They mostly commissioned about one to two years after launch, which is, well, pretty usual for the People's Liberation Army Navy, if not, in some cases, a little bit faster. Now, granted, as per usual with the People's Liberation Army Navy vessels, the information is, well, there's a lot of information that isn't actually there. So you have to make some assumptions, make some tactical guesses. But what we do know is, these ships have either served with the Northern Territory Navy, the Eastern Territory Navy, or with a single unit, the Southern Territory Navy. Now, the main operational areas for these vessels have been coastal waters in the Yellow Sea, East China Sea within the First Island Chain, as well as with a single vessel in the South China Sea. Now, the unit that was part of the South China Sea has actually been moved to the Northern Territory Navy, and as such, the vessels that actually remain in service with the People's Liberation Army Navy only operate with the Northern Territory Navy and the Eastern Territory Navy. Over the course of the ship's careers, one single vessel has had her name changed, being Hull Number 6. Her name would be changed to Zhang Fan, I believe. Might be incorrect, my Mandarin is not great. But additionally, two units have been sold to the Bangladesh Navy. The first unit being hull number two. 
additionally, followed by either hull one or hull three, we don't really know. With some reports stating that hull one is still in commission with the People's Liberation Army Navy, and some sources stating that apparently hull number three was actually sold and is in fact actually apparently is still in service with the People's Liberation Army Navy. We don't actually really know. That's the problem about China and their navy. You don't really know all the information, unfortunately. Now, looking at the OSINT side, or open source intelligence side to this. So, as of today, which being the 2nd of April 2022, all units are currently in service with either the People's Liberation Army Navy or with the Bangladesh Navy. At this moment in time, a single unit has been upgraded to take the smaller close-in weapon system very similar to that being used on the Shangdao class corvette. However, further upgrades have been in the circulation, however we don't actually know for a fact if this is going to happen or not, or the ships will be scrapped because of newer frigates coming online. We don't know, but what to the space.